now. On 105.9 FM and streaming worldwide on the WMAL app. O'Connor and Company. It is 5.06. Whether you're ready or not, it's time to go. It's O'Connor and Company on a Monday morning (laughs) right here in your nation's capital. And we are ready to seize the day. Why don't you help us seize it, too? Coming up at 635, Kim Russell. They call her the hippie love coach. She was the coach of women's lacrosse for years at Oberlin College until, you know, she thought that women's sports should just be for women. Then she was fired. Now she's an ambassador for Independent Women's Forum, and she's on that bus tour rolling into D.C. this week. 705, Joe DeGeneva will join us. It's 735, Hogan Gidley to give us a little preview of this week's big presidential debate. And then at 805, Jenny Tear, New York Post, working on the border. And look at here on a Monday of all days. It's the one and only Mercedes Schlatt. Wow, Mondays are a lot tougher than Thursdays. Tell me about it. Is it Julie Gunlock? <laughs> How do you is do just it? A, she's a hero, isn't she, for showing she's up on a She's a total Monday? superhero. And she deserved every moment of the little vacation she's getting this week. So that's That is true. Here. So I'm very happy to step in. And our loss you. of Julie is also our gain of Mercedes. And Aww. Mercedes, I'm so glad to have you here because... You have worked in uh, the White House Communications Department for uh, two different presidents, right? Uh, President George W. Bush and President uh, Donald J. Trump. You were in the, uh, what what was your your official title? I know it's very important in D.C., the title, but it was in the Oh, yes. It's just, um, for Trump, I was Senior Advisor for Strategic Communications. There you go. And then for Donald, for for Bush, I was Director of Specialty Media and Media Affairs. So, yes. So you can help me figure out about this new hire. It was announced over the weekend, a brand new, his title is the Associate Communications Director, which sounds like a pretty, is that a a pretty, no, not so much? No, so the question would be, is he like a commissioned officer? Like, is he a special assistant to the president or a deputy assistant to the president? Sounds like it's more of a, actually more of a... um, Low, le- lower level job, but I okay. I could be wrong. I haven't well, seen. Well, he has been the spokesman for the Interior Department up until now. He's been the spokesperson for the Interior Department. His name is Tyler Cherry, though that doesn't sound like his real name. That could be a stage name of sorts. That's what because, it sounds like to me. <laughs> yeah, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Tyler Cherry. <laughs> Tyler Cherry um, is. Uh, well, I don't know what the official uh, definition is. I can, I, I, and in, you know what? I don't need to give you a a, a, a a label. I can just tell you that he is married to another man. In the wedding ceremony, he was wearing a dress and a lot of makeup. In his official uh, photograph, his ID photograph for the government, he is wearing uh, earrings on both ears and could be wearing earrings on other parts of the body that aren't seen. Um these are all very superficial things to say about him, but but make no mistake, he is definitely part of uh, the broader LGBTQIA plus 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 oh, community. Oh, much broader than that. The dress yes. he's wearing a lot of dresses with a, a lot, lot of dresses a, going on. A lot on more here. makeup that I than let that me even put it I this wear. way. You know Sam Britton, the bald headed nuclear guy who got arrested for stealing mm-hmm. women's luggage right. and then wearing the clothes out on the runway and sort of wearing dresses and eight inch heels and lipstick yes. with his mustache. That guy okay. Tyler Cherry makes that guy look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Okay. He makes him look like the manliest, butchest, straight arrow that you'll ever see. Tyler Cherry is steering into the curve of LGBTQ plus IAA. Uh, identity let's say and and if i may that's sort of the least objectionable thing about him once you read his ideas and his thoughts and what he stands for but before we get to that just by promoting this person to this position i know that on the left this will be celebrated as inclusive and part of pride month and wonderful but it is such a middle finger shove it in your face move to many Americans who find this kind of behavior mainstreamed as a danger to children in terms of, you know, representing a lifestyle that is uh, dangerous, sinful, and not something that should be paraded out in the mainstream corridors of American culture. Yeah. I don't even know where to start with it. It was the nicest way taken, I could say it. We'll get taken, to his ideas in a moment. Okay, because I, I, he's literally 
Tyler Cherry has taken Pride Month to a whole new different level. Okay. <laughs> Like seriously, every he day is Pride been Day. The spokesperson for like Target, or been the sports per- spokesperson for Disney at this point, based on it, it j- just is kind of troubling. Actually, you make a honest. great point. Those corporations would not have hired. They may have considered it, oh, but then somebody in the room would have said, "No, guys, he can't represent us. That's just that. Th- is this how we want our brand to be represented to the world?" And then the the answer to the Biden administration is yes. Yes, yes, of course. This is how he, they want the brand of the United States executive branch of government to be represented to the world. I, I do think, though, um, despite, you know, his taste in clothing and stuff, the um, in dresses. <laughs> That's a nice way to put it. <laughs> I'm trying to look like, OK, live your life however you're going to live your life. OK, I, but when you start digging into what he believes yeah. in terms of issues and how extreme he is to me that's more troubling than anything that you're I've seen correct let's let's move on to that part um l- let's read some of the things that he has said on the twitter platform now called x uh, they've been screenshotted and saved because he has subsequently deleted all of these things but l- be clear he got the job and the promotion before these things were deleted. Yes. So any basic vetting would have uncovered the things that he well, said. Well, and he was already working for the Interior Department of Interior. That's so right. So there should have been some vetting there. Right. But obviously So not. let's start with um, this one from 2015. Police equals slave patrols. Voter ID equals poll taxes. NAACP bombing equals KKK bombings. Neither slavery nor Jim Crow were that long ago. We just evolved. Um, How about um, time to recall that the modern day police system is a direct evolution of slave patrols and lynch mobs. Oh, that old lie that got trotted out back in uh, Mm -hmm. 2015. Um, as well as for queer people of color and the intersectional role that race and sexuality play in police brutality, health care, etc. He also called to abolish ICE at one point. Um, <laughs> Can I add this one, though? Sure. Thankful for Thanksgiving memories like last year when I ruined dinner by sparring with my uncle about systemic racism and police brutality. That's Why is one. my whole family racist? And then he puts the little crying emojis, two of them. Thank you for his the person, this other person, liberal partner Jacob Cherry in must crime. Be a I, I'm assuming the other person the might husband? be the quote unquote husband or Jacob wife, Cherry. or I don't know. Who's, that's what it is. Uh, in I, which I'm position sorry. today? This yeah. Um, but, oh, that's a great point. Thankful for Thanksgiving memories like last year when I ruined dinner by sparring with my uncle about systemic racism and police brutality. Let me just explain to everybody listening: um, we are all the uncle, and this guy. Every single day is Thanksgiving. And Tyler Cherry is going to step up in the yes. White House to try to ruin our dinner every single day by sparring with us. And this is what he's thankful for. This is what he loves. This is who he is. He's a little soldier in Barack Obama's uh, reinventing America platform that he brought to us in 2009. Uh, that He is part of the community organizing that we love so much. Actually, oh, and wait till you hear what Tyler Cherry believes about Israel and uh, quote unquote Palestine, because he's going to fit in just great with the radical lefties that are running this White House. Um, and we'll tell you what his new positions are. Wait, let me be clear about that. Political positions, <laughs> other positions I'm not interested You're so in. Bad. <laughs> but we'll tell you what his new political positions are now that he's got the job and everyone has discovered what a radical he is. Now he's got a statement that should make you all feel better about yourselves. That's coming up in a moment. First, though, it's 515. WMAL, making sense of the markets. Because generational wealth doesn't build itself. Download the WMAL app to stream us for free. Now, make no mistake, last year, Tyler Cherry was sort of exposed for some of his radical social media posts of the past, attacking police, criticizing Republicans, supporting Hamas and other anti-Israel movements. Over the years, he's had plenty to say, whatever anti-Israel terror group emerges at any given time, you could count on Tyler Cherry to throw his support to that group. The guy Mm. hates the state of Israel, that's for sure. So this came up a year ago. 
Uh, and, well, here's the announcement from Politico. After more than three years of, at work at Interior for Secretary Deb Holland, Cherry started last week as an Associate Communications Director at the White House. Uh, some of the things that he has said in the past with regard to race and police um, after the Freddie Gray incident and the riots said, praying for Baltimore, but praying even harder for an end to a capitalistic police state motivated by explicit and implicit racial biases. Um, this one, oh, uh, uh, Cherry was posting support for, quote, Palestine back in 2014 during the Gaza War. Yeah, that's right. There was a Gaza War back then, too. This is nothing new. Wait, Hamas wait, wait. has and been he... trying to kill Jews for years now. And he added um, just real quick, he said, yeah. uh, it's, let's recall the modern day police system is a direct evolution of slave patrols and lynch mob. Yep. I mean, yep. seriously, Larry, this is, he also wanted to abolish ICE. He right? wanted to abolish ICE. Yeah. He compared police to the slave patrols and lynch mobs. He's posted pro-Palestinian and free Palestine uh, comments. But here's the thing. Here's what Tyler Cherry has said. This is about uh, midday yesterday when all of this sort of blew up over the weekend. He'd Oh, he also has an obsession with white people. Like he would he would see, you know, uh, images of political rallies and, and do a screenshot and then post, look, it's all white people, not a black face in the crowd, you know, and of course, criticizing Republicans. But as if there's something wrong with being white, which is, you know, fascinating and illuminating. Anyway, he deleted all of those posts, all the ones that had white referenced in it and stuff, deleted all of them and then said this. And I quote, this is Tyler Cherry, your new associate White House communications person. Past social media posts from when I was younger do not reflect my current views, period. I support this administration's agenda and will continue my communications work focused on our climate and environmental policies. Well, there you go, Mercedes. Then then we shouldn't worry about all those things. Let me make He's, this clear. He said his he job, doesn't believe them anymore, so that should be enough for us. His job is safe. If, there, if it would be a Republican... They wouldn't survive more than 24 hours. Oh, yeah. His Tyler Thanks. Cherry's job is so safe. It's not even it's not even funny. OK, like he will before you know it, he'll be like promoted to communications director. Sure. Just give it give it like, six, you know, well, hopefully. Well, it would be, be historic, you know, but that, here's and that's the all thing that matters. Here's one part that you're missing. He got a minor in gender studies so who's very excited about getting a minor in gender studies so yeah. part of this i have to also believe like the indoctrination from college just like proves like look at this mind it is oh, completely yeah. just so messed up the whole situation and so radical it's yeah. radical it's not even like a you know center left situation center left mentality no 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 for him you know, he takes it to a whole different level in addition to how he um, decides to dress and put yes. a lot of makeup on. Well, your your oldest is what, 22, 21 21. Now? My oldest is 24. We're in my, I've got a 19-year-old. I've got, you know, we've got yeah. kids in this wheelhouse, this you and I, yeah. where we've had to raise them at the advent of social media. And I'm sure you've had the same conversation that I've had, which is, listen, don't, whatever you want to put on social media, know that it's going to live with you the rest of your life. Yes. It can harm your career. It can harm your job prospects. It can harm your relationships if people see what you said. So, you know, be very judicious about what you put out there. But you see, Tyler Cherry lives by a completely different set of rules. All Tyler Cherry has to do is put out a post today saying, yeah, that doesn't reflect my current views. And all is said and done. All, all is fine. I'd like to ask a question of Tyler Cherry. He says, past social media posts from when I was younger do not reflect my current views. Really? Okay. Can you be specific? Do you no longer believe that the police are lynch mobs and, and connected to slavery? What yeah. changed exactly? Because you posted that as if it was a historic fact. Uh, do you no longer believe that Palestinians should be free? Do you no longer believe that white people are a problem? Please tell me what specific ideas have changed and what made you change your mind. And he won't be forced to answer that question. Of course Mercedes. not. This man is, I don't know if he's a man. This person is so. Yeah, exactly. Like, don't don't is, use gender specific language No, I just like, like, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like the mustache with the red lipstick. I just, it's a little much. Okay. It's a little much. I'm but, just looking to see. You know, there are no pronouns in his profile, so oh, it really makes it but that's, very the, difficult. But we have to understand he will he will be vic he will become the victim. 
This is what's going to happen. They're going to be like mad, mad Fox News wrote this really mean article about me and all these, you know, right wing people are right. attacking me. And thank God for my because they're all like my uncle who's like a racist, like my whole family. This is what's right. going to happen. He will become the victim, Larry. Just yeah. watch. Well, it's not and- like Dylan Mulvaney where they're like, OK, we're losing billions and billions of dollars. This yeah. is the White House. And this is the Biden administration, and they will protect him the, to be make him. He'll him. have like a cover on Vogue before you know it. And the fact that they even hired him really tells you what a unifier this president is. He wants to bring us all together, and and he didn't see anything divisive about this character. Five twenty three. Now on 105.9 FM and streaming worldwide on the WMAL app. O'Connor and Company. It is 536. It's O'Connor and Company. Thanks for tuning in here on a Monday morning. It's going to be a busy week. We have so many Supreme Court decisions coming down. We've got the uh, safe Title IX bus tour rolling into D.C. We've got the debate, which I still think isn't going to happen, coming up this Thursday. It's a busy week, and I'm glad you're starting it with us here on O'Connor and Company. Coming up at 635, Kim Russell, the hippie love coach from Oberlin's women's lacrosse team until she got dismissed for wanting to protect women's sports. She will join us. 705 Joseph de Genova. 735 Hogan Gidley, your old uh, drinking pal there at the White House for Saturday. <laughs> Did you go out drinking with Hogan? That would be a party. Uh, um, yeah, he he'll didn't join wear dresses, visit. which is a good thing. So. <laughs> That's right. He, never, he is a well-dressed man, but oh, he yeah. knows how to dress like a man. Yes. And at 805, Jenny Tear of the New York Post. That's Mercedes Schlepp. I am Larry O'Connor. Um, actually, no, I've it's been not Thursday. It is not Thursday. It is Monday. <laughs> you are here on a Monday. You seem bitter about it. I am here it. on a Monday. Oh, oh, we have special music for this. Let's bring that on. Mm-hmm. You know what yesterday was, right? June 23rd. You know what yesterday was? Uh, No. Well, the uh, the pro- the proper answer was it was Larry's birthday. I mean, oh, you did, sorry, you're you right. You sent me yes, many greetings Larry's about birthday. it. <laughs> I That's did send okay. many greetings. Yes, you did. You Happy sent me birthday, greetings Larry. on social media yes. and privately as well, and it was very sweet. Uh, but that's not what I'm referring to. It okay, was. Okay. It, it, it is my birthday yesterday, June 23rd. It's also the day we commemorate Title IX being signed into law. This was back in a a, a, a simpler time when. When social change and political change in our country was actually voted on and passed in the legislature and then signed mm-hmm. into law by the president. I know it seems right. weird, doesn't it? Equality for women and girls. I mean, what a yeah. day. What a day. And right? it was enacted by President, then President Nixon with a Democrat Congress. Uh, but they were able to get together and uh, get things done. Nancy Pelosi, Speaker of the House, who I believe back in 1972 was 70 years old. Nancy Pelosi <laughs> took to the X platform and said, today we celebrate 52 years of Title IX, an historic achievement that transformed the meaning of equality and opportunity in and out of the classroom. House Democrats remain hard at work to level the playing field for women and girls, because when women succeed, America succeeds. Now, of course, as you can imagine, this was met with many responses curious and confused responses to Nancy Pelosi saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, women and girls, define that. What do you mean by women and girls, Madam Speaker? But she didn't actually explain herself at all. No, because she because now Nancy Pelosi's party are trying to destroy Title IX by redefining women. and Now Tyler Cherry can play on the lacrosse team. That's right. That's right. Women and girls, the very best women and girls that we're trying to give as much opportunity as possible are women and girls with male genitalia. Yes, that is accurate. Uh, The Biden administration, by the way, says that their rewrite of Title IX will not allow biological men in women's sports. But anybody observing the initial paperwork coming out of their torturous process of rewriting Title IX knows that that's exactly what they intend to do. Did you know that Title IX, when it was first passed, was something like a page and a half long? I that's wouldn't it. be surprised. Because it was a very know. simple proposition mm-hmm. 52 years ago. Right. The new rewrite that the Biden administration is embarking upon is 1,500 pages long. Mm-hmm. Why is it that complicated? Why does Title IX need to be rewritten at all? 
you know, it, it's there, but they're talking about with the 1,500 pages, they have like 31 references to athletics and then it prohibits gender identity discrimination. That is your That's right. key words right that, there. That allows men in. Because yeah. then that allows men in. So he's, again, the Biden administration is lying because they're saying, yeah, yeah, we won't allow biological men in sports. But when you dig deeper into the 1,500 pages, then you're talking about like, well, you can't, you know, prohibit gender identi- identity disc- discrimination. So if Larry, if you say, well, yeah. I'm a girl and I want to play sports, you're going to you're going to be allowed to play. That's right. This, this, this is how they get away with lying. They say, oh, no, no, yeah. we're not going to let men play sports. We're just going to let women who have penises and X, Y chromosomes play in sports. But those yeah. are women, don't you know? Yeah. Yeah. That this this is where we are. Um, so as we celebrate the Title IX anniversary, of course, as you know, Independent Women's Forum and a couple of other great organizations have sponsored a bus tour all around the country. It started in Scranton, Pennsylvania. That was the alleged hometown of Joe Biden. Uh, Julie Gunlock and I were there. We were the MCs of the very first stop on this bus tour. And this week it comes full circle as the bus tour rolls into Washington, D.C. Yeah, and the bus was vandalized. Just, it was. It was yeah. vandalized on Friday by a bunch of, you know, trans calling women them a or hate women group. kind of, you know. Well, they literally but, called them a hate group. And, you know, they, they vandalized the bus calling them a hate group. These are women who are from all political ideologies basically saying, no, no, we need to protect the sports for women and girls. Well, uh, I can tell you that the bus tour is coming into town. It's going to be stopping. Riley Gaines will be there. Paula Scanlon will be there. And get this, tennis great, Hall of Famer, absolute women's athletic legend, Martina Navratilova, will be joining the IWF bus tour uh, to save Title IX and protect women's sports. Kim Russell, the former women's lacrosse coach, she's going to be there too. She joins us at 635 to talk about this. And I can tell you, I was, uh, like I said, Julie and I were, Julie Gunlock and I were at the first stop of the bus tour. All of the women there are fantastic. They're incredible. They're un- in- inspirational leaders. I, I have a hunch on the politics of a good handful of them. Uh, I can tell you, I disagree with some of them on a lot of basic fundamental ideas politically, but that doesn't matter on this bus tour. We all had one thing in common and it was a very simple one. Protect our daughters, protect our wives, protect our sisters and make sure that title nine and sports remain women only female only. You, you missed that. You know, whose birthday it was yesterday? Justice Clarence Clarence Thomas. Thomas. You betcha. I know that. Are you kidding me? I know. How proud am I that I can share a birthday with Clarence Thomas? That is remarkable. So happy birthday to our great A great, great incredible American patriot. One yeah. of the greatest American patriots alive today. And, and he shares his birthday with a Supreme Court justice. It's oh. 544. <laughs> well, this is an enticing little tidbit, Mercedes Schlapp. Trump says mm. he knows who his vice presidential pick will be but he's not going to tell you. He also said that his running mate is likely to attend his first debate this Thursday against President Joe Biden. I guess the bigger question here is, does the VP pick know who who the pick is? Oh, who knows? I mean, this is what is so fascinating about Donald Trump, right? He keeps mm. you in suspense. It's kind of like his version of the apprentice you know it's like he's yeah, he's literally totally. the, you see these um, Wait, are you telling me that joan rivers potential... is going to be the veep who? that'd be awesome who joan rivers oh joan rivers oh. was she one celebrity apprentice when all right sorry she I did. Go she's ahead. so lovely but she's she's now in she's heaven. dead <laughs> so that but good try mary good try i'm like joan rivers um she would have been a great vp pick because she's yes. so such a, so fun look i think based on what i'm seeing um and based it would be interesting to see, and based on just some of my, some of the folks I talk to, they, some of the you know, insights I, you have. Come on, the spill insides. It. Um, you, you know, look, it could go into a lot of different directions here, I know. but I feel that um, he does have a, a an affinity with uh, Doug Ber- Burgum, yeah. the governor from North Dakota. I keep Dakota. hearing Doug Burgum's name, and he's been really. He was on CNN just la- yesterday. He and was just great. Really was very strong in his performance i think yeah we're gonna play a little know, bit of that later yeah oh okay ben carson is another one that is just a very good loyal someone who understands president trump someone that 
won't go up that go up there and make it about him you know what mm-hmm. i mean like he's mm-hmm. just a, he's a he's a he's solid and then you've got that next crowd which is that jd vance the marco rubio the least stefanic crowd right. right or byron donald's like and i think out of that that group i could see jd vance kind of rising rising as well so i would yeah. predict a doug burgum or a jd vance all right let me just say so so i heard so, somebody and it's like everybody like takes to social media and saying i just heard this and i just heard yeah. that and somebody said i heard it's not going to be a senator which by the way i wouldn't be surprised because it's such a tight senate race this year um, that to is get the majority true the and actually to me the most shocking one has been marco rubio because i marco rubio like they the teams are not very close to the marco rubio team so when he was first mentioned i was actually surprised yeah i, no, I actually marco, thought that wasn't that that was an interesting he's I, done I would a really good marco job rubio as a surrogate over the last couple of months though but he's, he has become a surrogate in the last couple great. of weeks but here's the thing he values loyalty yeah. and and he does it's he does remember like if you weren't loyal to him Right. It's, it's a tough go. So tough can go. I just can I just throw it? I like to throw it out there every time, and I want to throw it out there again. And again, th- this was revealed at his rally where he said, in my mind, yeah, I know who my vice presidential pick is going to be. And then he said, most likely that person will be at Thursday's debate, most likely. Most and likely. then he said, they'll be there. I think we have a lot of people coming. You know who's going to be there? Who? Glenn Youngkin. Not, not only is yeah. Governor Glenn Youngkin going to be at the debate, but the next day, a Trump rally is now scheduled for Virginia Beach, Virginia. And for the first time, Glenn Youngkin will be on stage shoulder to shoulder with Donald Trump in the first of many anticipated rallies in the Commonwealth of Virginia, revealed here last week by Rich Anderson, the chairman of the Republican Party. Well, Times Could that be changed. the time for the announcement? Can, can I tell you, this is why politics is so interesting. So you remember during the governor's race here for Go- Governor Glenn Youngkin. So I'm the one that gets the call that it, it, the president was going to be calling into Virginia and they wanted Glenn Youngkin when he was running for governor. Mm-hmm. You know, th- it was going to be a Glenn Youngkin, Donald Trump scenario right, where they were going to. So, yes. so Trump was endorsing Glenn Youngkin, et cetera, et cetera. I don't. And, and so. Guess who was the surrogate who was technically the Glenn Youngkin person for that uh, you, call? You, you, you worked to connect the, the Me. The team. I was it. Wow. They picked me. They're like, well, Glenn Youngkin cannot get on this call. Can, can you do it? And I was yeah. like, yeah, sure. Yeah, I think I could and probably do that. And now it's like that. Glenn Youngkin's going to be on stage with President Trump. It's funny how politics works. It but, is. But, you know, I think Glenn, Glenn Youngkin would be an excellent pick. I, I, think, I think he so is someone who can bring this independent voter. He's He, ha- he is incredibly likable, very yep. smart, politically and from a business standpoint. Yep. He's a and businessman. He, Trump yeah. respects businessmen who have been yes, successful. I, I like that. I'm not opposed and to it at all. he could deliver Virginia. It seems like they're very committed to the idea of Virginia. For, it certainly makes committed. the Democrat strategy a lot tougher if Virginia's in play. And, it, and again, rally scheduled Virginia Beach the day after the debate. Yeah. Uh, just watch that space. Watch that space. It's 553. Mm.